Queen? Yes, we can see. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, depending on where you are joining us from today. I am Dr. Osman Solmaz, working as an associate professor at DJ University. I'm also the director of School of Foreign Languages here. And I am uh, extremely thankful for the British Council for organizing this session and bringing us with all the wonderful teachers and teacher educators around the world uh, for this session. And today I'm going to talk about linguistic landscapes and how we can use it as a pedagogical resource in English language classroom. So first of all, we can take a look at the uh, outline. So after making the introduction to the concept of linguistic landscapes, we will be talking about examples of LLs, as we call them, in the everyday life. And we will be talking about why and how of using uh, linguistic landscapes in classrooms. And hopefully, we will have time for a uh, sample LL in L2TL uh, activities and resources. So uh, as I move forward, I would uh, very much like uh, you to participate and uh, turn this session into a more interactive one. So first, I will start with uh, the definition of linguistic landscapes. Can I see whether uh, you are familiar with the concept or not? Is there anyone who is familiar? Or do you know the definition? How would you define linguistic landscapes? And uh, I see that there are new people joining us. But just to have an idea uh, to see your background. Mm -hmm. Some of the people in the audience uh, are familiar just a bit, not really sure, uh, no. <laughs> so uh, that, that's actually good. That's actually good because uh, it will be uh, a good opportunity to learn uh, more about it. And I see various responses. Uh, so if we are going to take a look at it, first of all, uh, look at the picture in the background. I will ask you to uh, take a look. And I'm sure that you are familiar with the word landscape, but uh, it's not uh, the traditional landscape as we know. But how about the uh, typically man-made integration of uh, linguistic elements to those landscapes? Uh, this is called linguistic landscapes. So if you are to define the concept, we can say that they are the language surrounding us in terms of different shapes. It could be words, it could be images, murals, graffitis, and it could be either in public and or private spaces. So basically what we see around us uh, can be considered and be categorized as linguistic landscapes. And I also see some uh, people providing examples, but this is the definition. And uh, I'm sure that you must uh, have come across to uh, the concept at some point, or you know the idea behind it, but maybe the uh, concept is new to you. Uh, but overall, we can say that uh, linguistic landscapes is basically the language surrounding us in different forms. And sometimes it's called urban print or environmental print as well. So there are different categorizations. And to understand the nature of linguistic landscapes, I would like to quote a researcher, Williams, uh, and how he categorizes the top down and bottom up uh, parts of the linguistic landscapes. Uh, as we briefly mentioned, uh, linguistic landscapes are out there in both public and private spaces. And you can see that when it's public, uh, in public spaces, especially by public institutions and public signs, it typically involves a rather uh, top-down approach. Uh, a decision is made from the authorities and then it's enforced in the public space. But bottom-up uh, linguistic landscapes often involve uh, private uh, enterprises and their resources or materials uh, 
uh, that are used in the public space or the environment around us. So I would like to ask you a question, and I have provided two examples of uh, linguistic landscapes. What are the uh, linguistic landscape uh, examples around you? I think I read that one of the uh, one of the people, one of the audiences, said that uh, billboards and shop signs are examples, and I see that airport signs. Yes, definitely, that's an, another example. And are there any examples? Uh, city lights, um, mm -hmm. traffic signs. Yes, definitely. Advertisements, signs in train stations, toilet signs, social media advertising. That's a really good uh, point because linguistic landscape also uh, exists in online spaces. Library signs, billboards, ads, flat panels, media signs, discount billboards, uh, mass media, bulletin board, boards, historical landmarks with information uh, and sometimes in different languages. That's a really good point uh, that Tim is making because uh, linguistic landscapes around us are not often in the uh, language of the country that's spoken, right? It can be multilingual, it can be translingual. And we are often uh, facing this question of the audience. Who is the uh, audience? For example, I want you to take a look at the first picture, no P zone. So who is the uh, target audience in this one? You know, who is this uh, <laughs> text for? Okay. So different questions, is it for pet owners or the dog or dog owners, right? Who is, uh, who is going to look at that sign, right? So when you have the uh, linguistic landscape resources around us, you also have to question what is it written for, right? And who is it written for? Uh, what's the idea behind it? And on the right side of the screen, you can see that uh, it's just a simple postcard, uh, which I believe that can be used uh, or can be considered as linguistic landscapes as well. So uh, I would like to briefly ask you about your opinions about why do you think we should integrate them into language classes? Of course, if you agree with the idea that linguistic landscapes should be integrated into language classrooms. So what kind of values they might have for our English classes or in general, uh, any kind of language classes? Uh, they are authentic, uh, real world language use, they surround us. Students appreciate it when they are taught real life language connection with life, everyday person, everyday connection with the uh, textbook, right? They're part of our daily lives. So many responses, it's really hard to catch up, but uh, critical thinking to make the concept more practical and students learn the language of everyday life and appropriate for collaborative works as well. Uh, bridging between life and class, really good point and motivating students. They are typically motivating, they may be inspiring, and students can learn to understand and question what uh, the title or the text is featured there, right? So these are all great answers. And uh, based on the previous research, uh, previous uh, researchers mentioned that uh, linguistic landscapes can be suitable for pedagogical uh, classrooms because they are often free and they are considered as authentic resources. And we know that authentic resources are encouraged uh, or uh, appreciated in the classroom context, right? And students, uh, there is this possibility of incidental learning because you are constantly exposed to the language that you see around us and why not bring it to the classroom? And some researchers argue that it also contributes to learners 
symbolic and pragmatic competence because there are deep layers of meaning in those signs. And it's also useful for their critical multimodal literacies because the uh, signs that we see or the language that we see around us is often not really limited to the text, right? There are multimodal elements as well. And some researchers argue that we should not really limit the uh, role of language learners only as learners. Why don't we, uh, you know, suggest them or prepare them uh, activities to send them outside and make them language research resources, uh, researchers. Uh, and that's another advantage. And as many of you also type down in the chat box, learners making connections between classroom and the world beyond the classroom walls is another potential of uh, LLUs in classroom. In addition, and finally, students are uh, provided with opportunities for using their creative and analytical thinking. And they are also trying to understand the dynamics of different factors in a particular society and how language is used. For example, why a certain language is preferred over another, or even when you look at them carefully, why a certain uh, language is used at the top, but the other language is used at the bottom, right? So uh, those kinds of things provide opportunities for the uh, learners. And also uh, when students investigate or analyze uh, or exposed to this kind of materials, they have a chance to become aware of their own sociolinguistic context. But the question is, how are we going to integrate it into the language classroom? So we cannot just take it and use it uh, directly, right? We have to prepare our students so that they are uh, becoming uh, expert users, not just language learners. So based on previous research, we have developed this pedagogical framework, what we call linguistic landscapes in second language teaching and learning. LL in L2TL, as we can say. So the stage one, first stage, introduces, uh, it deals with the introduction of the material. So we introduce the material and we ask students, observe the material or the sign through certain questions. This is typically similar to the warm up activities that we do in class. In stage two, where uh, a didactic uh, teaching, uh, as we can say, occurs, we help students explore in a guided way and become more aware of the uh, points mentioned in the uh, science. And then in the third stage, we have post analysis, which is in the classroom context, we help students develop similar materials. That's why it's also called participation and creation. And I will be providing four different examples uh, from different categories that are showing how to implement all of these materials in your own classroom. And then finally, we ask students to go outside the class and see or find similar patterns or examples of signs and then bring it back to the classroom. Because we, as we mentioned, they are, the, the point is to make connection with the real world settings, right? So if you're ready, I think we can move on to the uh, activities. These are the main stages, introduction, a detailed analysis, post analysis in the classroom and bridging ideas and activities. So, I have questions for you. If you participate, I would be happy. This is, imagine this is the uh, introductory image analysis part in the classroom. So what do you notice first? Describe what you see, what shapes, what colors, what words, what other details do you see? What type of a sign is it? Is it an advertisement, a government sign, a store name? And where do you think the picture is taken? Since this process is done through observation, we have to 
lead in uh, the students, right? We have to have a lead in session. And what are your answers? I'm curious to hear. Mermaid, you see gender, the toilet, uh, pirate, uh, no matter who you are, please keep yourself clean. Uh, doesn't really matter who you are, but uh, the focus is on washing in a funny way. Restroom sign, restaurant, it's in a cafe, uh, WC in an aqua park, <laughs> which is more, a more specific uh, response. And there is the hook from Peter Pan. Yes, I see that many people are recognizing some of the uh, images. And imagine engaging students with these type of questions. This is actually part of a sign. I am not revealing the full picture in the first part. And uh, Joanna is summarizing really well. Wash your hands, whoever you are, in a toilet. That's the point. And then the word whatever. I'm not really interested in that, right? That kind of tone. Clever use of imaginary and some advanced vocabulary. And regardless of your identification, just wash your hands. And so let's see the second part of the stage. We are in the classroom and we are going to analyze it together. So first, we got students' responses and guesses, right? It's also to activate their background knowledge. And we also help them make predictions. And as you know, at the end, we try to see whether uh, we conform their uh, predictions or not. So let's see the uh, full picture. This is the full picture, actually. And most of you were right, right, in the restroom. And, and then there are some uh, questions here. What do you think is the intent of the text image? So now we focus more on the details. Can you see a sign like this in your country? Or uh, what kinds of cultural differences or similarities are displayed through both images? So we are actually uh, trying to uh, talk about the functions of signs, the location of the signs, and the purposes of the signs. And I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that students will be attracted. And at this stage, when you are uh, using a detailed analysis, uh, students will check their uh, participation in the class and their uh, previous guesses. So, after this section, we have uh, the third stage. After students are familiar with the science that we have, we ask them to engage in a post-analysis section. In the post-analysis section, uh, we have different activities. But the point here is really important. The point here is that students should engage in activities in uh, the classroom because we don't send out them yet, okay? So that's why uh, we should be uh, organizing activities. All right, so let's take a look at it. And there are really great responses uh, in the chat box. So I will ask you the first one on the left, draw a character, which would replace one of the drawings in the picture. So I'm asking you, what would you draw here on the right side? Uh, so sorry, on the left side, whatever, just wash your hands. What would be something suitable? And uh, robot, yes. <laughs> Voldemort, King Neptune, yes, I like the idea. A centaur, so flounder, male mermaid, yes. Stormtrooper, uh, and I also see uh, Santa, Spider Man, and I also see, uh, I think it's a uh, Giza Pramit, uh, Aquaman, Donald Duck. So the idea is that it shouldn't be really the shape of a regular uh, woman or man that we see, right? Because it should be a character so that students get the idea or the joke or the point of the text. How about 
I will ask you to take a look at uh, the right side of the image. What would you do for the right side of the image? How would you change the text with the uh, just wash your hands? Instead of that, what would you write? Whatever, keep yourself clean. Yes. Welcome to the clam. <laughs> <laughs> if it's on the classroom door, yes. Just clean, always wash your hands, keep everything clean, keep it safe. Remember the closet behind you, stay away from the virus, yes. Just do it, just uh, be away from COVID. You know, we got all of that experience. It's who, who will get sick, not me. Thanks for washing up a kinder, uh, you know, uh, warning or a tougher one, wash or die. <laughs> Say no to virus, keep your hands clean. So as you see, so many different reactions are uh, we, that we get uh, based on a, just a single uh, linguistic landscape sign. And imagine doing this with your students. And also, if you noticed in the first activity, we focused more on visual materials. And the second one in, involved uh, textual resources. So you can address different aspects of linguistic landscape materials and adapt it into your own question, uh, your own materials. And I really love all the answers. Uh, they're all hilarious. Thank you for the responses. Let's take a look at the final stage because we want them to uh, go outside and explore, right? I want you to look at the image on the upper right side of the screen. It's for the restroom. But uh, where do you think this restroom is? What type of uh, shop? Is it a cafe shop, coffee shop, tea cafe, restaurant? What makes you think so? What makes you think that it's a, a coffee shop? And we have really specific responses as well because of the cup, the cups, right? So that gives the idea. So you have a clue, you have a visual clue. So take a look at the uh, number four activity on the very right side of the screen. I'm sure you all see. Imagine asking your students to design a new restroom sign for their favorite place or home in groups of three or four students. And they have to make sure that their sign is relevant to the type of place they choose. So students have to make connections, right? With the restroom and the uh, drawing and the activity that they have. So students have to come up with new ideas. Of course, there are some other alternative activities as well. Look at the number one activity. We can ask students either take or draw because it depends on their level and uh, possibility of using uh, digital uh, images, let's say. And then they can uh, take draw pictures of the restroom signs in different places. Uh, they visit throughout the week and then they bring it to the classroom. And if they have, let's say, if they cannot really go outside, right, we can alternatively ask them to make a Google search, right, uh, of restroom signs and bring some examples. Uh, Amir has a really good comment. I truly agree. Uh, it's really surprising and uh, how many of them have different linguistic issues uh, that they would be really great use in classroom. Uh, Yes, Hiba, I would say that they are similar, very similar. And then you can ask them to find sample structures and sentence, including just in it. So if you don't want to deal with, or if you don't want to give them an assignment, including multimodal literacies, you can also focus on text-based activities. And how about yourself? Where will you find the materials yourself, right? It will be a challenge, but, if you use the web, you can easily enrich your class. If you are 
if you really want to talk about toilet and restroom, there are so many signs and look at them. I want you to take a moment to look at all of those signs. Uh, and I'm sure you have seen maybe even more interesting things, right? Uh, tell me which one is your favorite. One is the upper left, two is upper right, three is uh, down left, and now four is down right. Which one is your favorite? <laughs> I see a lot of one. I'm not sure the gender of people writing one. Uh, I see three and four. If you are uh, obsessed with Star Wars, of course, three, uh, two may be interesting for you as well. But they are all really interesting. And there is a lot to talk about, right? Just uh, based on just based on something uh, simple, you can uh, organize the class around it. So for this class, uh, you use, uh, you bring the materials and develop it. Uh, yes, this approach depends on the tasks and activities that you bring to the classroom. I want you to take a look at the second uh, example. So look at this uh, tip jar. And yes, if you have any questions, feel free to write it in the Q&A section and we will have time for that. So uh, I'm sure that you are all familiar. So my question will be, I have two questions for you. At what time do you think the picture is taken? I'm really curious to see what you are going to say. At what time do you think the picture is taken? 9 a.m. <laughs> There's not so much tip inside it, right? Uh, around 10 a.m. evening, 12 p.m. at the end of working time. So you really have to think about it, right? You can't just make it up. You have to think about it. Uh, why? What will be the uh, what will be the reason why you are uh, saying what you are saying, right? So we see daylight. Right, and we also see uh, there is some money inside it, so it shouldn't be really super early in the morning. If it's uh, let's say uh, opening up at nine a.m., uh, then it shouldn't be uh, nine thirty or maybe nine twenty. I don't know if they are working really quickly. How about last question? How much money do you think in there? the beginning of the shift, anytime, just no customers. There are really great responses. Thank you all for turning this into a more interactive uh, session. I really appreciate. Around seven, eight dollars, three fifty five, twenty. dollars 55 20 not much, <laughs> just five, not a lot. And yes, uh, Jenna, thank you for pointing that out. These are all culturally bound signs. And students really have to think about it. And also, I want you to pay attention to the heart sign, right? There is a heart sign right next to tips. Why do you think there is a heart sign in there, right? What's the purpose of that heart sign? Any guess or idea? Humanity gratitude. To encourage to give, gesture of appreciation, to spread love, donation, to make it easier, sharing is caring, for appreciation, politeness, to show they appreciate anyone who is giving, right? So again, a lot of reactions, a lot of questions, a lot of comments. Uh, so you are basically encouraging students to just talk and talk with simple questions like this. So now, in the stage two, you, you don't have to use this image, by the way. You can bring something similar. Again, just take a look at the images. Tell me from left to right, we have one, two, three. Which one is your favorite? God knows when you don't tip. I can only swim in dollar signs. Please don't let me die. Money is the root of all evil. Cleanse yourself here. Which one is your favorite? Number two, cute Nemo. <laughs> yes. Uh, three, one. So it really depends, right? 
And imagine asking the first tip box. Do you think that tip box is in a location where it's more, uh, how can I say, it's more, uh, there are more religious people living in the first picture? Can you say that, the first picture? Because typically, possibly, you know, possibly, maybe, uh, you know, the idea is that they know their customers, right? They know their customers. So they have to design something related to it. But again, of course, it could be rhetor rhetorical as well or sarcastic or mocking, right? Uh, there are different reasons why people put those signs. So this brings us another great discuss the discussion about the signs or the language that we see. So why? What is the purpose? Why do you think they wrote it? You know. So there are a lot of things that you can uh, you can uh, have questions and deals with them. All right. Activity time. Now I'm going to ask you. Look at the left image okay look at the left image uh draw a tip jar box and design it with a text to attract more money if you wrote or if you drew your tip jar or box what would you write let's see uh what kind of reactions we get i'm sure we are going to have some original uh, responses so what would you write to your tip box. Of course, if you're a student, let's say, uh, it also depends. Donate for the poor, for a bar, tip or trip, <laughs> Patricia. Still better than giving it to tips. What you give will come back to you in double. I like it. Tips save lives. I'm poor, please help me. <laughs> Tip or trick, help pets to find their homes, show your love with the heart. Uh, for animals, tip for other uh, others to trip. You are my pension. Let the waiter serve better the next time. Uh, show me the money. What goes good, what goes around comes around. Uh, tips, why not? Uh, really great responses. How about the second activity? If you were to draw two images for people to compare, what would you draw? You know, so you kind of force them to make a choice, right? Maybe they don't really want to uh, tip, but you give both options and they may feel actually forced to pay. So if you draw two images at the same time, what would you write or what would you draw? For example, Real Madrid, Barcelona, right? A fat cat or a slim cat? Yes, Star Wars and Star Trek. Trackers and Star Wars fans will get really crazy. And magic picture will show when the jar is full. Harry Potter versus Voldemort. Marvel or DC? Child education, child malnutrition. Iron Man, Captain America. Superwoman, Superman, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, really great ideas, Nemo and Dory, <laughs> Disney Plus, Netflix, Devil and Angel, oh, I like this one, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. <laughs> All right, so as you see, you have to give students some alternatives, right? They will keep thinking about what kind of things that they can write and compare. Let's see some examples of bridging activities. We can ask students to create their own tip box, you know, like they are physically preparing it, and then write a, text, a persuasive text on it. In the second activity, how about turning this into a tip jar contest, right, at school? Students design their boxes, and we give every student like a dollar fake money and then we ask them to tip in their favorite boxes and the highest tipped box wins. So you all engage students and all the students will go and watch and read a lot of English exposure 
is going to happen there, right? And they have to think about it. They have to think where to tip, what to tip. And then if you want to create some sort of cultural awareness, you can ask them to learn more about tipping culture in the target language culture and uh, their own culture. And you can also ask them to uh, visit a restaurant or coffee shop and they can learn about customers tip living habits and they come back to the class to discuss. So as you see, we have to find connections with the outside, okay? It's not just inside. We shouldn't be done in the classroom. We should continue and uh, involve students uh, outside activities as well. All right, another, let's look at the, another idea. And there are really great comments as well. Uh, because tipping culture is not same everywhere, right? And we see some examples from Japan. Take a look at the image. Uh, we can ask about the abbreviation NASA and where it, where it is and what type of text again. Uh, but it's really interesting because there are different colors and look at the logo of NASA and there are stars and there is the orbit, right? We can ask students to locate all that information. And then you see rocket science is written in red color, right? The color is different. And then we can talk about the, uh, about the colors and why certain selections are made. And in addition to that, there is an idiom there and you have an opportunity to talk about the idiom. But again, this is the introduction to the class. So we don't really have to get uh, into detail. And then if you want to turn it into a, let's say shadowing or a pronunciation or talking, speaking, you can ask them to imitate this text as a native speaker or a regular speaker. It's not rocket science. Oh wait, yes it is, right? That kind of intonation and stress. So you uh, involve students again uh, with an integrated skills approach and you uh, all, involve them with different activities. So let's take a look at other examples. And I would like to hear your opinion again from one, two, three. First one, I love you to the moon and back. The second one, the universe is made of protons, neutrons, electrons, and morons, unfortunately. And then I may be nerdy, but only periodically. So which one is your favorite? Mm -hmm. I see one, two, three. So mixed ideas. Three is me, really. Two, three, three, very scientific. And look at all the details. I mean, there are so many things that you can talk about. And this is called, or at least what we call, T-shirt talk. Imagine. You know, I want you to take a moment and look at the dress that you have right now. Maybe some of you have English on you, or if there are people around you, take a look at them. And they are all t-shirts. And we have a lot of uh, t-shirt uh, talk happening around us. And uh, why don't we use those t-shirt talks by bringing that into the classroom, right? And if you are going to use, let's say the first picture, there are a lot of heart signs, there are stars, and the moon text is written inside a circle, which is actually in shape of moon. And we also see heart in, inside the letter O, for example. And for protons, neutrons, for the second one, we see a lot of rhythmic words. This would be something uh, yes, I was just going to say, uh, one of the participants said, this would be something uh, Sheldon Cooper from the Big Bang Theory would say exactly. Uh, and the last one, uh, you also have an opportunity to talk about periodical table as well, right? Like some sort of chemistry as well. All right. And then what we can ask to our students uh, in classroom, okay? This is again in classroom because we don't want to send out our students directly 
without spending time in the classroom first, because we want them to become familiar and comfortable with the idea. So we ask them to design a text just on a spread of sheet, uh, very simple. It doesn't have to be, of course, uh, a real t-shirt, uh, but that, that will be really exciting too. Uh, and that they have to design the text and let the text do the talking. They have to pay attention to style, fonts, whether it's going to be bold or italic, right? Look at all the images that you see on your screen. They have different fonts. They have different types of writing text, different colors and different uh, multimodal resources. You see uh, on the left side, Potter hat. And we see the uh, we see the uh, lightning bolt that Harry Potter has, and also, by the way, I see some examples of uh, different uh, comments, experiences, and they are all great. Thank you for sharing them. And what can we ask students to do? First, we can ask them to visit a clothing store and take pictures of English text on the clothes they see, or they can write down the types of words, sentences they see. It really depends on the level of the students, right? You can make it more challenging or easier. You can really adapt it into the classroom's level or age and interest. And then second one, to help them go a bit deeper, find a friend, family member or a relative who wears something with English on it and interview them about the text. Are they really aware of it? I know that many people are just wearing it without being aware of it. And here uh, I see an example Suela Ojan mentioned. And then uh, also uh, Ingrid participating and mentioning that in France, some people wear it, but they don't really uh, realize what it says. Sometimes it can be really offensive, right? And uh, it will be really interesting. Uh, but of course, uh, this brings the uh, idea of students questioning what are they wearing, what people wear, and what it means, right? So they have to, they will look at it in a different way. All right, another one. Uh, another one. So look at the image. And I know that some of you may know this guy. Is there anyone who knows this guy? <laughs> if you are on Instagram, uh, do it with sign. Yes, somebody mentioned. And great, great. So uh, there is a picture behind him, right? Uh, and Rebecca, great idea with surreal boxes. You have already done it. And uh, so he is having a sign in front of the Friends TV series. Do you think he carries something that is in favor of the Friends or not in favor of Friends? I'm curious to hear your opinion. Yes or no, not in favor, not against, can be both, I think not <laughs> against, different opinion. It might not be really relevant as well, right? Yeah, that's, a, that's another idea, but let's see. Uh, so the point here that we try to give is that location of the sign, the context of the sign is also important. So let's see what he says. He says, Seinfeld is way better than Friends. Do you agree? Do you agree? I want to see if you agree or not. Yes, no, no, a big no. <laughs> yes, no, both are bad. Oh my God. <laughs> no, haven't seen either. Yes, that's also a possibility. Well, by the way, everyone is revealing their age as well, okay? <laughs> You know, Seinfeld dating back to the 90s. Uh, so that's another point of uh, discussion, right? And then you can talk about uh, these questions with your students. And it doesn't have to be friends or 
Seinfeld, right? But we ask them about why do you think they are using the capital letters? Have you noticed the capital letter usage? Way better, is way better, right? So asking students to pay attention to that kind of details would be really important so that they understand the point of it and the language of the text is a bit different, right? So we have to teach them about that as well so that we increase their multimodal literacies. Some other hilarious texts that do it with the sign uh, has stop standing up when the plane lands. Yes, grandma, I am still single. Your dog doesn't need a social media account. So which one is your favorite? One, two, three, from left to right. Two, three, I see mostly two and three. Oh my goodness, two, three. <laughs> Okay, really, really great. <laughs> For singles number two. Yes, I agree. All right, let's take a look at in-class activities that we can do because we are also running out of time. I have to be a bit faster. On the left, we can say, create a sign featuring a talk to one of your family members. Can you write an example like this, similar to the activity on the left? What would, what would it be if you were to write a sign featuring a talk to one of your family members? What would it be? Mom, you are, I am taken. <laughs> Look, mom, I am on TV. Yes, mom, I wore my socks. Buy me some cheesecake. Cake. <laughs> I need privacy. Still not eating mushrooms. <laughs> Shut up, please. Oh, that would be offensive a bit. Mom, it's me. I, I can't really catch up with all the responses. They are all wonderful. And on the right side, another activity to develop students' uh, social media awareness. They can write something related to uh, social media behaviors, right? Like sharing a spot sharing a music on spotify or sharing uh, a story online about the road that you are taking right so uh there are many things that you can really write of course uh not everything they read is fact it's another great one so some ideas they can make a Google search of dude with sign and try to gather information about the guy with sign. They can visit his Instagram, Instagram account and see what kinds of other signs are shared and bring them back, uh, one of them. Or my favorite one, third activity, design it and create a sign to create awareness on a social issue such as violence, animal cruelty, equal rights, and bring it to the class to talk about your message. Imagine your students are bringing all the signs and there is a parade of the sign in there and everyone is talking about their sign, advocating for something really meaningful. So you are, this is exactly when you, uh, this is what you exactly do by creating connection with the classroom and, uh, outside the world, right? And definitely we can use the sign as a template uh, for the t-shirt as well. All right, so I'm hoping that this pedagogical framework will be helpful. So we take them, we bring, we start with a simple uh, linguistic landscape sign or image, and then take students and help them become or come to a level that they can reproduce the similar uh, text or sign in a different way by themselves. And we can help students with preset questions. I'm putting up, putting this here, but you have got the point, I think. And this is also for the uh, people who are watching it afterwards. And a copy of the PowerPoint presentation will also be available on British Council's Teaching English or UK webpage. 
and another one, remember we mentioned about students becoming researchers. They can go outside and collect images, right? And they become the researchers who collect the data by taking photographs and they analyze it by organizing the photos into categories. They are all really interesting, I think. And they can also focus on social functions of English science or language forms. And some other ideas, there are households, there is household inventory ideas. Students find all the examples of English on appliances and electronics in their house. Or if they cannot really go outside, they can use Google Maps, Street View, and then immerse themselves in the experience. They can take screenshots and bring it back. And then they can also talk about graffiti as well. And thank you so much for everyone's ideas. But I have one last slide, which I think that you will really enjoy. If you are interested in further ideas, this was just four main examples. You can visit llineltproject.com. This was a project we coordinated with Regional English Language Office in Turkey uh, with collaboration from Texas Christian University and Dijde University in Tur Turkey and the United States. You can access many resources and we also have developed a pedagogical guidebook. Uh, you can find it on the project website. There are so many ideas in there and also there are many uh, there are many uh, videos that we have uploaded. So we actually asked some of the teachers to go out and test all of these uh, pedagogical framework resources and they have done it and they have uh, uploaded their materials and presentations on YouTube. So you will have access to this uh, PowerPoint as well. So th these are uh, clickable. All right, this is the ending for me. Uh, please, if you have any questions, I know that we are on a limited time. You can email me at allsolmas at dijde at tere, tr, and you can also follow me on social platforms. You can be connected either on Twitter or Instagram or LinkedIn. I would be very happy to be in touch with everyone uh, because uh, I agree that uh, all of the people uh, here have valuable ideas and I would be more than happy to see that you are you have something to take away and then uh, share your feedback with me and also if you have different ideas and thoughts feel free to drop me a line thank you so much everyone uh, and I think yes <laughs> thank you so much um, Osman for this Great presentation um, and many thanks to our participants for their active participation. Uh, it was very interesting. I think we will now look at our environment with a different eye and um, we hope uh, you found our session useful, everyone. So I have shared some instructions, some links about the recording and the certificates and you will also find the presentation on the same um, teaching English websites and please follow the instructions and the links for the certificate so you can download it right now and for the uh, webinar recording you will have access to it with the, within 24 hours and please complete our feedback survey as well so we have a uh, question from Rebecca. Let me read it. Is it important to let students know the stages? For example, should it, should I tell them that they are making connections? Uh, I think that's a good question, uh, Rebecca. Thank you for the question. Uh, I think it's not really important to let the students know about the stages. If you do it in a flowing way, you know, uh, and fluently, students will get the idea behind it and without really being aware of it. But of course, if they are, let's say, teenagers, uh, you can, uh, at the end of the class, you can let them know what you are going to do or what you are trying to achieve in the classroom. Uh, but I think that it's not really necessary. And uh, Shirin Hanum, there was a question about the pedagogical guidebook and where we can download. So I will be uh, sharing the link uh, here on the chat box.
for you all to have access. Uh, let's see. Hello in eltproject.com. This is where uh, we have digital version of the book where you can really click so it's more interactive or you can simply download the PDF. Uh, there are many great ideas developed by language teachers and teacher candidates like you actually. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so um, I'm sharing the links again, the mm -hmm. colleagues in the chat and okay, please, uh, you can use the Q uh, and A for your questions. Um, okay, I'm going to share your, uh, how can we deal with inappropriate sentences or pictures if it comes up? Mm -hmm. That's a that's a great question. So uh, I think the the idea is uh, is it really inappropriate or what we consider inappropriate? So first of all, uh, we bring the resources, right? So we can have control on that. But what if students bring? I guess that's the concern. Uh, I think that would be a great way of developing students' pragmatic awareness as well. I mean, of course, if it's very offensive or really not suitable in classroom context, we have to uh, find a way to eliminate that uh, sign or that picture that, that are used. But other than that, I think that would be a really good opportunity to talk about how to deal with uh, or how to uh, understand uh, a lesson or text or material from a pragmatic perspective. And one more question, how can we relate this activity to students who have different learning styles and different skills? Mm -hmm. That's another good question. Thank you for uh, asking that. I think that, uh, you know, as we mentioned, you can use these materials uh, in uh, different for different levels and different uh, students with different interests because there is a multimodal element that you can use visual elements, also textual linguistic elements as well. So it's really a, a combination of it. I would strongly recommend to bring both linguistic and multimodal elements, uh, elements into the classroom. And if students have different skills, it will also suit their needs. And some of the activities are actually, uh, or should be done, in groups so that students who have different skills can have something to bring to the table. Okay, colleagues, uh, apologies for the link. Now I'm sharing the correct link to the survey, you will find it. So please use that link uh, to share your feedback. Um, so there are some more questions. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, okay, we answered Jihad's how can we deal with inappropriate sentences and the learning different learning styles. And okay, now you also have the correct link to the survey. And um, if you have, how can we identify what materials we should use in classrooms according to different levels or ages? Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for the question, uh, Samuel. Uh, it's, you know, as a teacher, I think that you are the best person to know your students and their levels. And I think you are following a particular syllabus and curriculum, right? What I would do, depending on the subject that you have, uh, you will select your materials accordingly. Because if it's not really in line with the resources, uh, the curriculum that you have, it may be just for one time, right? But what we want is linguistic landscape resources to be a seamless integration and part of the classroom. So therefore, I would recommend you to uh, take a look at around you and see what would be suitable. And I think that some of the materials that we used can be easily adapted into young learners, even young learners as well. Like, uh, I love you to the moon and back t-shirt, if you remember. If you simply focus on images in there, even young learners, you know, can benefit from it, but you can also focus more on 
the idiom itself, and that would be more interesting for or more suitable for adult learners or teenagers, let's say, or depending on the level. So uh, that's how I would respond to that question. You are welcome. Thank you. Okay, colleagues. Um, so you will um, see the links. I will share the links for the certificates once again. You can download it right now by following the instructions. So um, let me share it once again. Thank you so much for completing the survey, Bobica. Okay, so um, I'm checking the q and I think, thank you. Um, I think now we are, we are, now we are going to, oops, close the session. Thank you uh, so much once again, uh, Dr. Osman Somas for sharing your insights uh, for this uh, very interesting presentation and, um, our um, uh, participants have been very active. So thank you um, so much for sharing your ideas. We hope you found the session useful and we very much hope to see you again in our future sessions. Hopefully. Thank you so much for the invitation and thank you everyone. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you.